proxies. We didn't see proxy last time we saw PvP here, which surprised me a lot. We'll see if we see it today. Going into game number three, decided to take the lead. Down here in the bottom right, in the blue, for us player, he just evened it up. It's Deer. His opponent, an excellent Protoss, was a Protoss player for Jin Air Green Wings, also known as Dollar Sign, O Dollar Sign. His name stands for Save Our Souls, the Morse code, uh, you know, SOS that you use to signal for retreat. It's SOS. I don't know, I was trying to make that long on purpose <laughs> again, but. I'm pretty sure that's what his, his ID is supposed to mean. I mean, it doesn't have anything I would to do with assume, the name. like, yeah. Um, a little trivia for you guys the reason why SOS is the. Morse code uh, signal is because it's like the easiest to type and to remember. Isn't it like uh, three dots, three dashes, three dots? I think it's three. Or the opposite. I think it's three, three dashes, dashes, three dots, three dashes. But isn't that longer? Like, what if you're in a, a sticky situation? You need to like do it fast. Wouldn't dots be quicker? I think dots would be quicker, right? Yeah. I think you might be right, but I I don't know. For some reason, my brain's telling me you're wrong, but I <laughs> but like the more you say it, I'm like, nah, I think you're right. I'm so, someone's going to tweet at us and tell us the answer. Listen, if someone keeps sending Morse code also, I'm probably going to go help them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I think he just got this mixed up because it's clearly somewhat yeah. confusing. Oh, for sure. I used to know a lot of Morse code, but then I just realized it wasn't important and it fell out of my brain. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we see a lot of proxy on this map because a lot of proxy locations. We also see a lot of hidden tech. Um, because like a hidden dark shrine in the top right of the map isn't technically a proxy. If you want to be like really official, people get all upset about that. But yeah, it's, we see that a lot. We see a lot of hidden things on this map because the map is big. It's only a two-player map, but there's a lot of, of space to hide structures. SOS is going to mix it up again. He's uh, getting a... Well, not going to really mix it up, I guess. He's just doing it a little bit different from Deer. He's not getting that second gas until a little bit later, until after that Cyber score. So it comes out a little bit faster. And also, he has a little bit less gas, so maybe, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what he does from here. There's a few different reasons why you might want to do that. One is the second gate, which looks like yeah. this is reason here. Other reason why is you want to get your tech out a little bit faster uh, and expand off of it, which is pretty rare, but we do see that every now and then. Um, you're not going to be able to get a Mothership Core and tech off of that, but you get a pretty quick gate and a pretty quick core because you won't spend that 75 uh, minerals on the second gas. So it's going to be two gate, and Deer scouts it right away. So, see how he responds. SOS comes in and is going to see the third pylon coming down as well. So, he knows for sure that Deer is just doing straight up. I'm trying to hide my tech build. Make the Stalker and the Mothership Core pretty fast. And get that probe out of there and then put down your tech. Looks like Twilight, yep. Twilight, really strong on this map. Not only for attacking at the front, but for using Stalkers to harass later on in the game. What if he does do the same build again? And you were actually right about what Stork was saying. Like Stork was like, "Do it again." Uh -huh. was like, "No," but I, I thought Stork was like, "No, do it again." It's like I want to see the dark shrine in your forward pylon, same way. I, mean, I suppose it's possible, Valdez, but it could oh. also just be a dark shrine built here. That is possible. I doubt it. It, it would have to be in the main. He has a probe at to the top right, but it's too ah. late. Okay, yeah, it's just gonna be blank versus a uh, two-gate Nexus, which is going to be scouted here. Oh, oh no, oh, it's not. He's hiding it. That's really, really good. SOS is actually going to have to back off, taking some extra damage from this. He's not paying attention. Okay. Small victory. Deer Chicken's out, too. Oh, is he going to He's gonna have to recall here? Yep. And he's not going to see that Nexus. Oh, he actually oh. escapes without recall. Oh, he's, oh, he thinks about checking. He's so nervous. He doesn't know right now. And this is one of the best builds to get away with. We saw this a lot. Classic was doing this in nearly every game against Creator. You go Nexus into Robo, and you just survive. Oh my god, he is playing with fire. Four hit points left. Yeah. You survive if it doesn't get scattered, but I think Deer has suspected something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, he saw there's no tech over here. It's like the only other thing, which would be like Deer's worst nightmare, is that it just so happened that the tech is hidden to the top right of his base. And you just didn't get to see that. But you can't really play StarCraft off of that crazy assumption. It's much safer to assume that there's a Nexus. But instead of also assuming that directly, he's going to get his own Nexus and poke with the Stalkers. Three sentries at home for defense. Mm. 
And I think this is a pretty good approach here. The problem is, no matter what, his Nexus is still going to be late, and he needs to get something done with these Stalkers, and it's going to be difficult. It's just not going to be easy. Yeah. He loves the blink. So it's being very passive with this Nexus. Not yet. Uh, moving to the bottom map because he's not sure about what Deer's doing, but he sees only three Stalkers here poking, and he's like, okay. Yeah, he was Fine. thinking it might be Stargate, I guess, based on his, uh, his Stalker placement there. He's about to have an Immortal out, too, so he's probably feeling pretty happy with himself. Like, build order-wise, that's he's ahead. significantly ahead, yeah. He's ahead. Um, the one thing he's behind on slightly only for now is probes. He'll he'll definitely catch up with that earlier Nexus. Thing and is these uh, he didn't... Also, he also didn't like immediately transfer to that nexus, but it's just like very small stuff. You know? Right? Yeah. I mean, small pieces. But I'm glad you mentioned them because they, they do actually matter. Of course, in StarCraft, the game of small advantages here and there. But uh, one thing that's really going to come back to bite Deer, I think, in this game, is his three sentries. Like, I like the idea to warp in a few sentries to help defend, but they're not going to do almost anything for him for the rest of this game. One's going to be useful for Guardian Shield. One's going to be useful for Hallucination. The third one. Is going to be like, <laughs> well, if you want to scout... Just tickling guys in the back? Well, it's just going to be like, well, if you want to scout, like, a little bit more regularly, I'm here. You know, I got that energy for you, man. That's like the assistant assistant sentry. Yeah. Basically. Exactly. The backup backup sentry. The assistant to the assistant. Exactly. Well said. Blue's Nation's dead, so you can't even pick this pylon off. I feel like Trist trying to get the pylon alone would have been the better plan there. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't get really anything done. Right now, SOS is like, oh, cool. You don't even have a bay. You don't have any immortals. Yeah, he should be happy with this. He's actually even going to move across the map. Well, he's, he's got two immortals to one. One that's about to pop out, it looks like. And I don't yeah. know, may maybe those three sentries actually can come into play here on that big ramp at the bottom of the natural. Yeah, in a funny way, where, they're not, where this sort of attack would almost never happen. I think he's just threatening it. I don't think he's actually going to commit. He wanted to keep those Stalkers further away from his base. He knows that if he does try to attack here, those Stalkers plus perhaps some hidden ones could actually blink in his base. He doesn't have an answer for that. So he's just going to keep these units somewhat close to home. A Warp Prism is on the way for Deer. Now this is a choice I like a lot because uh, you did see that, that army moving out, and it's, it's poised here. I don't think SOS is going to move across the map with it. It just doesn't make sense. Looks like he's going to throw down a Nexus. He's kind of playing the way that Classic is. And some of the more like experienced PvPers are beginning to play this way, where it's like, okay, we've hit mid-game. Now I just got to be as greedy as possible. One Observer, as many Immortals as I can fit in before the bay that I also get quick. And also an earlier third sense, uh, Nexus that he does see with that probe. Because I guess he, he feels like, okay, this is a big enough map. You don't have the tech to punish me right now. And I can just get my third Nexus pretty safely. Yeah. I really like it. That's, that's basically what we're seeing here. And uh, well, let's, let's see what the Zealot drop gets done, because the attack that he was faking, his army is still out there. <laughs> like, it's still pretty far away. So he's going to need a Nexus Cannon here, as well as some Warp Ends back home. Where is his Nexus Cannon? He's losing, like, way too many probes. It was on attack move, and it attacked that uh, hallucination, funnily enough. Nine probes go down. That's a really big chunk. For no lost zealots, like he saved all four of them. That's impressive. That's that's a lot of damage. Deer's ahead in supply here with a pretty nice gas bank. And, you know, somehow, some way, a, a lead in Colossus range and plus two, only slightly, but I mean, for how behind he was in tech and everything else, to be able to catch up this much, this quickly by playing greedy and doing this just one zealot drop, is pretty nice. He's also getting his own third base. Yeah, it's a little bit later, but not hugely late. You know, it's it's yeah. it's conceivable that Deer could actually perhaps be called ahead at this point in some ways. Like, he's doing a great job. He's actually up seven probes right now. He's becoming greedier with the uh, second Robo as well. So he's going to commit more heavily to Colossi and still no, any, no kind of, like, Tempest tech out for SOS yet, not even a Stargate. So he either needs to get that many Colossi as well or get the Tempest tech eventually. This is a harass-based PvP as well, I love to watch. Like, hey, notice me. I'm attacking your pylon over here. Don't pay attention to the four stalkers that are going to kill a pylon over here. He's just, like, kind of using these little things. SOS is prepared, though, with an immortal. But I just love the way he's approaching this. So, so nice. And look at this, actually. Deer is able to get his third base saturated at the same time as SOS with better probes. Yeah, funnily enough, 
Deer kind of just like getting into his head a little bit. Um, SOS finally does put down that second Robo, but it's a little bit behind. And he's also going for Dark Templar tech. This could do something with the War Prism Harass, actually. But already, Deer's got a cannon, it looks like, in the main, at least. Uh, yep, just one in the main. It's the only cannon he's got, though. Making another one right now, though, as we say that. Looks like at the third base. Yeah. He's feeling this, man. He's in the zone right now. Yeah. He really is. You could tell after that second game. It's a very, very crisp build out of Deer in that game, and now... He's kind of got that confidence, that momentum. Stork came back into the booth, gave him another pat on the back. He's like, yeah, good job. Now keep it up. And he is. Yeah. Again, just teasing these Zealot Harasses. He just teasing them. Plus three on the way, significantly ahead of SOS. SOS hasn't started that yet. Charge is done. Yeah. And look at the Colossi count. It's five to three in favor of Deer. He's actually moving across to start poking. He has the better Siege Comp, and he knows it. And he has this Warp Prism, still threatening constantly. Deer is playing a great game. Can't take anything away from him here. Yeah. He was behind. He played almost arguably too safe early on, but now he's just like doing a lot of work. Three DTs just got warped in. Let's see what he gets done with that. I'm talking about SOS now, because that harass is often a lot more potent than just Zealots. And if Deer is not paying attention because he's focused over here, it could do a lot. Picks off the gas. Second cannon here in the main. Not ready yet, but a huge warp in to help protect the other cannon. And now, looks like he should be fine here, but still posing. Uh, posing He's going to get that bit. cannon. And there's no protection. There's oh, only boy. one observer. Where is it? It looks like it's with the army. You yep. can see it above those colossi. But another observer is about to pop out at that same robo. As soon as he saw that, he started another robo. By the way, look at this. Mothership core is still alive from earlier on in the game. Drops two time warps. Not, not a lot of support here for Deer's Colossi, though. Yeah, he doesn't have any reinforcing power. He's actually going to have to back off. It's five versus five Colossi, and a lot of damage is being done here. He needs to move his Observer. He needs to get in position to help deal with these DTs. They're still doing damage. And in fact, uh, he actually warps in some DTs back at home. Not, I guess those are going to become Archons. But uh, I'm going to look at some numbers here. Probe 66 to 62. SOS pulls ahead here. Um... Double Colossus for both players now, plus three ahead for Deer, slightly. Uh, SOS has been chronoing that to catch up. I'd say Deer's still ahead, but uh, that was a bit of a shaky moment. There was definitely some some chances that if Deer yeah. made any mistakes in some of these fights, he might have actually just lost. This is a very high-level PvP. Interesting. Both players playing very, very strongly now. Like, look at how technical these moments have been, like, right now. It's like, all right, one Warp Prism DT drop, I'm going to lose it. How many probes can I target down and kill? Because I think you're vulnerable. Okay, four probes for a DT. That's how technical we're getting at a PvP where both players are approaching max. Like, look at this. He's like, snipe the cannon, I'm out. <laughs> and all four Zealots survive. They pull those Colossi out of position at the same time. That's actually a really good point. This has been such a great PvP. Oh, my God. SOS has to be really careful moving out right now. Deer could get some free Colossi shots. No. Supplies are down dead even. Upgrades even as well. I mean, the production of the armor is slightly ahead for Deer. SOS has somehow avoided detection with this uh, fourth base. Looks like some more damage being done in the main. That that war prison man. Just... I, yeah, I think he just forced to cancel on another cannon. And he's just like constantly threatening. Look at this. What is going on? It's pretty insane. Uh -oh. Right now, SOS has more Colossi, but there's more here to support the Colossi of Deer. Yep, and look at those Archons. They're getting on top of this army. SOS is in trouble, Valdez. And Deer is going to take this game, it looks like, here. Just in a much better position. Amidst cheers from the crowd, just needs to target his Colossi now, and that's exactly what he does. That's going to be it. Even that War Prism getting in there. GG. Get outplayed. Oh, my God. That was a great game by Deer. That, that, was, was, that was one of the best PvPs you've seen in a while. That was phenomenal out of Deer. He's, He's like, yep, yep, I know. He's taking those blockers off now is what Stork's got to say. <laughs> Maybe not. He's like, Only for a second. Stork, you listen to me now. I'll teach you how to play some Frost or Protoss. He's like, I, you've gained one second of my listening, and that's it. SOS is now taking everything off. He's got to win two in a row now. Hard position for SOS. He does not want to be knocked out of the round of 24 by a guy who is not playing well these days. He's playing well tonight.
And it turns out that might be the only thing that matters. I I just I'm so 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 incredibly excited for the rest of these games. I think it's going to game five. I hope so, man. Definitely like, good. The way that we saw both those players play, the technicality, like the the safety, but also like 